Elijah Craig Barrel Proof's 12 year age statement is gone, but could that actually be a good thing? Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch. And thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So that's right, this has been the talk of whiskey tube and the bourbon community at large. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof has officially lost its 12 year old age statement. What we have before us today is batch B523, the second release here in 2023, and it doesn't have a 12 year age statement anywhere on it. In fact, right on the front, it tells us that it is an 11 year old and five month old whiskey, or at least that is the minimum age of the youngest barrel here in this batch. Now, of course, there's been some borderline hysteria, people thinking this is absolutely inconceivable, that it's the end of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, that this just marks, you know, no longer gonna be worth the buy. I think that might be a little bit premature in terms of designating this somehow the end of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof's greatness. 11 years and five months is by no means young and sometimes a little bit of variation in age can bring out the best batches. The rumor is that this batch is a little bit younger, but batch C, the last release of the year, might be 13 years old minimum. So things are getting a little crazy here with Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. The age statement is gonna be more flexible going forward, most likely. So we gotta find out, does that lead to actually better batches? I will say, other than this being seven months younger than we're typically used to, everything else is the same. This is still non-chill filtered, uncut whiskey, barrel strength, proof on this particular batch is 124.2 proof and that's still quite the hefty punch if you ask me again not much has changed the mash bill is the same it's still that 78 percent corn 12 percent malted barley and 10 percent rye that we're used to it's just the matter of the age statement going away so again the big question with this batch is does that flexibility does lacking an age statement actually lead to a great elijah craig barrel proof batch is younger better? Who knows? Let's dive in. Let's actually go to the whiskey and see if all the hoopla and hysteria was right or if, in fact, this might be a great batch despite all of the worries. All right, so on the nose here, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Batch B523. It smells pretty good. It has a strong vanilla cream note to it there is a nice lighter caramel not super dark but probably the most prominent note for me is this like stewed apple like really kind of a little bit tart some of that brown sugar that you get when you start caramelizing some of the apple sugars good brown sugar but really it's got that slight tartness of some apple, maybe like a green apple, really nice. Um, and there is kind of a, a rye punch to this. Maybe a slight touch of honey as well. Not too much ethanol, maybe a touch of it, but I don't detect a whole wave of it or anything like that. Oak, a little bit of oak there too. But I like that stewed apple playing off of that really sweet vanilla cream. Pretty nice. All right, I can't really complain about the nose. I think that's pretty inviting, pretty solid. Um, let's go into the palate, see how that fares, and see if any of that transfers over. Cheers. Mm. All right, so first sip there. My palate's still going to get acclimated, but I will say impression there is that that drank pretty hot. There's a cinnamon and even just a ethanol burn going on even toward the back end. But in terms of flavors that I'm getting, I got a lot of that stewed apple. So we're getting a little bit of a tart quality. There is that good brown sugar, much more of that honey coming through on the palate for me, like a nice raw honey sweetness quite enjoyable, especially mixed in with that tartness of the stewed apple. Good brown sugar, good cinnamon on this. Back end has a touch of like a, an oak and it is rye spicy on the back end for me. So along with some of that maybe ethanol lingering, there is a rye spice and it's a little bit drying. 
All right, let's go in on the second sip to see if we can pick out some more flavors now that the palate is acclimated. Cheers. Hmm. That was definitely more of a tame sip now that my palate has it on there. Again, I'm getting a heck of a lot of that stewed apple. I'm getting a lot of honey, more of a oaky barrel char, little bit of bitterness toward the back end of the palate and even toward the finish there for me. So a little bit of that oak spiked up, but it's really nice and sweet at, at the beginning with that honey vanilla. And it gets a little tart with that apple and maybe even a touch of pear or something. Raisin, I think raisin, if you were looking for another fruit category, it's kind of that dried tartness and it kind of transitions into that on the back end for me with some oak, a little bit of bitterness, but not too much, not too much. And it does have that hefty rye spice that lingers for me. This actually reminds me more of the Discovery Series number eight that I have, which is a blend of bourbons and rye and has that kind of apple, brown sugar, spicy quality to it as well. More than typical Elijah Craig's, I'm not getting any of the like chocolate, I'm not getting much cherry, and I'm not getting like a deep dark caramel. It's more this light, bright apple, pear, raisin combo for the fruit with this vanilla cream and honey, and then a spicy rye kick. All right, let's go in for the third sip We'll evaluate the finish particularly here and kind of recap the whole experience. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, man, again, it is spicy. The rye spice is prominent toward the back end for me. The finish is a lot of oak and a lot of that rye spice. It's got this Rick House quality, which I really enjoy, and the rye spice, maybe even cinnamon, a little bit of an ethanol burn. I'll give it that. It's pretty hot for the finish. I do think the sweetness of those apples, raisin, pear, a little bit of tartness, and then that vanilla and honey mixture is kind of different than most Elijah Craig barrel proofs that I've had. And then the finish really reminds you that it's a barrel proof with that rye kick and some oak, turns a touch bitter, and a little bit of an ethanol burn. So it's an aggressive finish but it certainly lingers for quite a long time and it's just continuing to give that rye spice, a little bit of dry barrel char kind of impression on my palate. All right, let's talk this batch overall and big picture for Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This one is actually pretty interesting and kind of unique, different from what I've had with other Elijah Craig Barrel Proof batches. It's usually more of a brown sugar, oak, some of dark caramel, maybe even like a barrel char experience for me a lot of the times some of that darker cherry as well this one goes light bright with those honeys vanillas pear apple raisin punchy tart kind of sweetness plenty of brown sugar to go along with it but a brighter cinnamon spice and a rye kick for me maybe it is this seven months less on the age statement that allows it to be a little bit lighter brighter it could just be this particular batch has those characteristics and they were going for that. I'm enjoying it. I will warn you, I think the finish is aggressive. This one sips a little bit hotter than the 124.2 proof that it you know, has on the bottle here. But for me, this is interesting and it's good. It's a really, really solid batch. I do not think that this is a disappointment in any way. I think that going younger might have allowed for a slightly different profile than we're used to. I'd be really interested to see what a 13 years minimum for the next release looks like compared to this. Maybe this one's light bright, the next one's going to be super dark and rich. You know, maybe a little bit more variation in the Elijah Craig Rail Proof batches with a year on either end is going to create more powerful distinctions among the batches. In terms of whether or not I think it's still worth the price of $70 MSRP, yes. For 11 year, five month old whiskey, we're getting pretty close to 12 years there. There might even be some stuff that's older than that in here. It's quite good and it is powerful and it is distinct. I think that it has a nice unique profile and is really, really solid. Now, one caveat I will put on all of this in this entire video is that 
if we start to see releases from Elijah Craig, because I know that they're doing single barrel, barrel proof stuff that can be as low as like eight years old, nine years old. If we start to see that, I might grow a little bit concerned that they are really lacking age stocks. But until we dip below 10 or 11 years, I think we're still gonna be okay with these batches and it might even provide more variation in what we're tasting. Let me know in the comments below, have you been able to taste Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B523? Have you enjoyed it so far? What are your thoughts? Want to know especially what you think about the loss of the H statement. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it a neutral thing? And we're just going to have to wait and see. Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.